In this video, we are going to explore some of the features of the PINK Z2 development board. The PINK Z2 is one of the main PINK enabled boards. We look at the board features and main interfaces, and what you can do with them and how you can use them from PINK. This is the PINK Z2, and you can see a list of the main features. The Xilinx Zinc chip, memory, network interface, SD card, which is used for boot, and the user accessible peripherals and interfaces, the LEDs, buttons, switches, the PMOD interfaces, the Arduino and Raspberry Pi headers, HDMI, USB, and audio. We'll go through each of these in more detail. The Power, SD, and Ethernet are covered in a Pink Z2 Getting Started video, so I won't go over these again now, other than to mention that we will boot the board from an SD card and use the Ethernet to connect to and control the board. First, we'll look at the features of this board. The Pink Z2 has a Xilinx Zinc 7020 chip from Xilinx. You can search the data sheet for this device if you want to find out more about the technical details, but you only really need to do this if you are a hardware developer. The Zinc chip will be covered with a heatsink on the board and the chip can get warm, but the heatsink should be enough to keep it cool. Make sure you don't put the board in a very warm place or close to a heat source or in an enclosure with no airflow or ventilation. The board has 512 megabytes of memory and you can see the chip on the board as indicated in the slide, but you don't really need to know where this is. The Zinc chip includes an ARM processor, and we'll refer to this as the Zinc Processing System, or PS, and it also includes programmable logic, or PL. The Zinc chip doesn't really look like this on the inside, nicely divided as shown on the screen, but this is a good high level representation of the device. For the rest of this video, I'll try to indicate if peripherals or interfaces are connected to the PS or the PL. This will be useful to know later and help you to understand how to use peripherals and interfaces. Marked in green, you can see four push buttons and in white, you can see dip switches. When you press a button, it will turn on and when you release it, it will turn off. You can flick the dip switches back and forth to turn them on. So when they're in the up position, as we are looking at the board now, they'll be on. And when you flick them down, it will turn them off. These on off values can be read by the zinc chip and you can use them to control something in your design. In red, there are four LEDs and in blue, there are two multicolor LEDs. These have a red, green and blue component and can represent the full color palette. I want to show that each of the LEDs, buttons and switches are all connected to the PL. This means that you must load a design to the PL before you can use them. Some designs may not use or connect these peripherals. If you do load a design, for example, the base overlay for the pink Z2, these peripherals will be connected and you can use them with the corresponding pink Python packages. In Python, you can import from pink.lib.led or pink.lib.rgbled. This will give you write functions to turn the LEDs on and off and set the colors on the RGB LEDs. Similarly, the buttons and switches packages are pink.lib.button and pink.lib.switch. These packages allow you to read the values from the buttons and the switches. After you boot the board and connect to it, you can find example notebooks for these packages in the Jupyter Home area in the board directory. The board has two PMOD ports, and PMOD stands for Peripheral Module. It has become a standard for FPGA boards as a way for plugging in external peripherals. This is a way of adding additional functionality to your board. A range of different PMODs are available from different suppliers. PMODs are controlled with the Python lib.pmod class. Pink has drivers for a range of peripherals. If a driver isn't available, you can write one for yourself, and there are pink packages available to help you do this. For example, if you have an I2C peripheral, 
Pink has an I2C package that allows you to send and receive I2C transactions to a PMOD. You could use this to build your own Python driver for your peripheral. In blue, you can see an Arduino header. It follows the same form factor allowing Arduino shields to be plugged into the board. In red, you can see pins that can be used for analog inputs. These are six single-ended pins that support 0 to 3.3 volts. They are connected to the Xilinx ADC on the Zinc chip. Some Arduino shields go up to 5 volts analog, so you may need to check that the shield you would like to use is in the supported range. In green, you can see a Raspberry Pi header. This allows you to connect to standard Raspberry Pi peripherals, or sometimes called HATS. If you plan to use this, you should be aware that eight of the Raspberry Pi pins are shared by PMOD A. You can use these interfaces with the pink.lib.arduino package and pink.lib.rpi. Similar to PMODs, Groves are simple, low-cost external peripherals that can be used to extend the functionality of your board. A wide range of peripherals are available from sensors to actuators, inputs and outputs. Grove uses a different interface to PMODs, but they can also be used with the Pink Z2 and a range of Grove devices are supported by Pink. Grove uses a four pin interface. Grove devices can be connected to the Pink Z2 board using a PMOD adapter or an Arduino adapter. These boards are available as add-ons to the Pink Z2. Four Grove can be connected to a PMOD adapter and the Arduino adapter allows four analog devices and four I2C devices, and most Grove devices are analog or I2C based. There are also some additional GPIO on the pink shield. The PMOD, Arduino and Raspberry Pi pins connect directly to the PL pins. Again, this means you need to load a PL design before you can use any of these pins on these interfaces. We've seen the PMOD, Arduino, and Raspberry Pi Pink packages, and we mentioned these packages include Python drivers for specific peripherals. As these interfaces are connected to PL pins, they can be used as GPIO, general purpose IO. So you could connect wires and use them to prototype or test something external to your board. You could also build up your own custom interface. In total, there are 64 pins available across all three of these interface types. You can use the pink GPIO class to interact with any of these pins. There are two HDMI ports connected to the programmable logic. There is no HDMI PHY. The ports are directly connected to the PL. By convention, pink uses the port marked in blue as the HDMI out and the one marked in green as HDMI in. As an example, you could connect a HDMI camera to the HDMI in and a display to HDMI out. As the HDMI are connected to the PL, a video pipeline can be implemented in hardware, which will give higher frame rates than the ARM processor could support. You can also capture video from the HDMI in and process the images in Jupyter on the processing system. You can get an image from the PS, say from a USB webcam, or say an image loaded or generated from Python. The image could be sent to the PL to be processed and displayed on the HDMI out. The PL can drive the ports at 720p resolution. HDMI 1080p is slightly out of spec for some of the PL pins in the Zinc chip used on this board. However, it's sometimes possible to use 1080p. Some boards may be able to receive and drive at this resolution with some external equipment, but this isn't guaranteed, so it's safest to use 720p. It's also worth noting that the HDMI are not used to display the operating system desktop. The Zinc chip used on the Pink Z2 does not have a graphics accelerator. It could be possible to create a graphics accelerator in the PL, and there are some examples available for this, but this is not the intended way to use Pink. 
Jupyter Notebook is the recommended interface and primary display for the Pink Z2. The Pink Z2 has a USB port connected to the PS. This allows you to use standard USB peripherals. For example, USB webcams, USB Wi-Fi or Bluetooth dongles, USB flash drives. Remember that Pink is running on a Ubuntu OS. This allows a wide range of USB devices to be supported. A selection of kernel drivers for common USB devices has been included in the Pink image. Other drivers could be added to the image. The Pink Z2 has an audio chip that supports audio in and audio out via standard 3.5 mm audio jacks. The audio chip is connected to the PL. You could connect earphones, a mic, speakers to the board. The pink.lib.audio class is used to control this interface. This concludes this overview of the Pink Z2 board. For your next steps, you can set up your Zinc Z2 board by following the instructions on the Pink Read the Docs, and you can also watch a short setup guide video. You can connect to your board and try out some of the example notebooks for the peripherals and interfaces covered in this video. In the Jupyter Home area, go to the base directory and then the board directory. You can find examples for the LEDs, buttons and switches here. You can check out the available PMOD examples in the PMOD directory. This is the example notebook for the PMOD OLED. You can see HDMI examples in the video directory. You can see that there are some examples of using the HDMI pipelines in the PL with OpenCV on the PS. You can also browse other example notebooks in the Jupyter Home area.